Aha! Uh -huh. A very good evening to you, Dinky Doo. It's me, Scotty McClue. And we are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. Welcome, 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 I say. Sunday night, nothing gets past me, of course. Great to have you with me. And we've got one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment, not just for one grateful nation, but for all nations. So much to talk about tonight, and so little time to do it in. Sorry about the waving hand there. Just setting everything up for you. Dinky News is Gordon Cridden. Lawrence LD Dev's watching. Good evening again, says Ben Lucas. Hi, Scotty, says Andrew Mackay. Good evening, Scotty, says Harry Marshall Sr. Francis Donnelly, Ali Haining, Andrew Mackay, Stephen Weirmouth, Dinky Do, Scotty, Dinky Do to you, Stephen Weirmouth, lovely to have you with us, excellent stuff, I hope you've all had a super week, uh, the weather I can't actually do anything about, but we will talk about that tonight, shout out to me Scotty, says Jonathan Scott Donegan, there you go, what about that for service, Henry Newton, Andrew Patterson, Jim Armstrong, Shani Brown and Walter Smith, a shout out for Laura Thompson from the infamous Clarkston, I don't know why Clarkston's infamous, certainly famous, Angela Goodlett, Hi, Scotty, says Shani. Good evening, says Raymond Benson. God and Cruden, we need a second show on a Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Well, last week's show was very, very, very successful. Thousands of you on there. Fantastic. Debs and Davy Crombie, Dinky Doo, Tony Kerr, says hello, Scotty. Rab Hill, Alice Norrison, Matthew Brown, James Copeland is watching. Lovely to have you all with us now. What a week it's been, the weather aside, of course. I have had tremendous feedback for this program. Everybody is loving it because there's nothing on television that actually interacts and interfaces directly with the public. Did you see that Theresa May had appointed a minister for loneliness? Now, the reason this has happened is because we don't have the radio phone-ins across the country anymore. One or two select stations with one or two sort of, um, what can I say, the kind of character that you either like or you don't. But we don't have a big general national radio phone-in. And I would like, I hope the BBC are listening, because I would like to try all that. Now, I know I'm no oil painting, but if we got it started, and then you can put on all your wonderful, able, clever people, that's all that sort of nonsense. Hiya, Scotty, you sex bomb. Shout out for uh, everyone. Uh, Stuart McKenna, Finlay Patterson, Shirley Cooper, Al Stewart, Stephen McKenzie and Sid Devine are all watching right now. Dinky doo to all of you from me, Scotty McClure. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. And if you're wondering who I am or what's going on, you might be an alien life form from another planet and you've never heard of me before. I'm Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. <coughs> Stephen Menzies is watching Dinky Doo. Uh, water colour dreepin. Ha ha, says Gordon Cruden. I don't know what you mean by that, Gordon. You'll have to explain. Uh, I was talking to somebody about this Brexit and they put up a little gif saying this is what stupid looks like because I want to save my country. Dear oh dear oh dear. I don't understand it. Think about it, guys. I don't want to dwell too much on politics or Brexit, but the government were very, very, very much against leaving the EU. Then we had that referendum, very, very misinformed and ill-informed referendum, and um, almost half, well, just over half the people decided they wanted to leave. A lot of them xenophobic, a lot of them misinformed, a lot of them not very smart, all that sort of stuff. And now they're calling people that want to remain remoners, snowflakes, all that sort of thing. So it's a bit like saying, then you get the character that goes, we voted for it, let's just get on with it. We didn't vote for it. Some of us voted for it. Some of us didn't. That's what we need to be careful about. Uh, you said you're no oil painted. You're a watercolour dripping. Keep up now. Oh, Gordon Cruden, yes. I may marvel at my own ingenuity sometimes. Uh, you only became a neonat to get more listeners. See, Leslie, see, Leslie, how wrong can you possibly ever be? I'm not even a gnat. I just want what's best for Scotland, and self-determination is best for Scotland. Even if you, if you had an independent Scotland under the Tories or under Labour or under the Liberals, 
all that sort of stuff, as long as it's an independent Scotland deciding on its own affairs, it doesn't have to break away from anything. It just has to have that hierarchy that whatever income comes into Scotland, we keep it. So there you are. So please don't uh, use silly terms like that that you obviously don't understand to try and insult me. All right. Uh, Charles McLaughlin is watching. Thank you, do. Evening, Scotty. Stay warm, says Carl Carlos Starley. I will do my best, Carl Carlos Starley. Thank you, do, Robert Devlin, says Albert Petty. Hello, Albert. Thank you, do, to you. Lovely to hear from you. I haven't seen you for far too long. Uh, what age does a boy become a man, Scotty? If you saw Harry Cochran today, you would say 16, says Alfred James Wright. What uh, a lovely thing to say after James Wright. Here, here, Scotty, says James Egan. Easy, Scotty. I called you out, says C. Leslie. Yes, you've called me out, but you've called me out wrongly. You haven't actually managed to call me out. I'm happy to discuss it with you. So if you think you know your stuff, you're very welcome to talk to me about it. So there you are. But there's no calling me out. There's no smarty pants nonsense like that. Sometimes it's attitudes like that that do a lot of damage to Scotland's cause. So there you are. Scotty, you're a legend. I used to love your radio show, says Louise Wild. Dinky doo, Louise. It'll be back. You're on form like the old days, says Gordon Cruden. Alexander Shand Hudson. Hello, Scotty. What a wonderful middle name after the great Jimmy James. Uh, Johnny M. Linney is watching. Dinky doo to you. I'm coming to Glasgow in April, says Joseph Gibbons. Joseph, welcome, welcome. You will love it. Martin Rose watching. Dinky doo. Carol Scattergood, Leon Smith. No smarty pants, Scotty boy. No, we don't want the smarty pants, you know. Keep a civil tongue in their head. They get too slick at using the social media and not actually realising that there has to be a little bit of substance behind what they are saying. I mean, you've got that lot that are going, we voted for it, let's leave. That's like saying we agreed to jump off the cliff when we were depressed. Let's go and do it now that we're happy. You know, just a lot of nonsense. Uh, True Radio is sharing the link. Dinky Doo, thank you, Henry Newton. Very much appreciated. Dinky Doo, and lots of love to everybody watching True Radio right now. Uh, what's tonight's show about, buddy? Says Paddy O'Gormley. Tonight's show is about people, Paddy. The same as it is every week. It's about you. It's about me. It's about your granny, your auntie Fanny, your friends, your family, all these sort of things. It's got a dash of politics. It's got all that. I love when people say, what uh, what genre is your show? I say my show is genre Scotty McClue. So there you are. Cammy West watching. We're watching in Lincolnshire with my beautiful Scottish partner Gwen, says Andy Brooks. Andy Brooks, dinky do to you. And uh, lots of love to you and Gwen. How wonderful. Down in Lincolnshire. Watch out for poachers. Uh, gives a topic, says Jamie Hooper. My topic tonight. Right, are you changing broadcast platforms, says Carl? Um, no, it looks like Facebook and I have managed to make some progress uh, this week. So there you are. Um, it was the distribution side of it that we need to look at. Very, very important. Uh, the topic we're looking at tonight, there's several topics. We're talking about how Mr. Trump has done in his first year. Is it, uh, is it a goer there? We're talking about should we pull out of this Brexit thing, right? Should that happen? We're talking about the weather. The weather this week, do you feel that everybody round about you have sent out a thank you to all the, the people working on the roads and everything, but do you feel that you've been supported throughout the weather? Now, uh, share and share and share the broadcast. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue on Facebook Live just for you saying dinky do. This is our big show of the week, 9 o'clock sharp on a Sunday night. McClure, can we get you into the Hydro for a Celtic Connections musical and chat extravaganza? By the way, you're massive in Drem with the mushroom harvesters, God and Stilling. Of course, you can get me into the Hydro any time. I've even thought about maybe looking at booking the Hydro for a night with Scotty McClure. Would you attend? I ask you, Jordan Hammonds watching Dinky Doo, James Cottis, Bob Huck and Gaz Rowley Jones. Lovely to have you with us. Great to hear you back on air again, says Christian Knock. My mate Inny and I used to love the late night phone ins when you were at Century, when we were doing security at Ellesmere Port. Christian, I remember seeing your name.
Sun up in lights. Fantastic stuff. Lovely to have you with us. And Ellesmere Port, tremendous stuff. The Earl of Ellesmere. Stephen Mackenzie, definitely. Uh, Trumple Stiltskin. Dear me, Scotty is no diplomat. Is he? <laughs> well, when, when he shouts at the news crowd, you're fake news. Fake news. All that sort of stuff. Um, you'd have to have a live stream. Uh, you'd have to live stream the Hydra gig, says Gar. Uh, Gar's really Jones. Of course we would. Josh Ruffin, Carpe Diem. Carpe Diem, George, I say, seize the day. Tremendous stuff. You should do an audience with Scotty McClue. Well, we did that on video and we sold thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Absolutely incredible. So there you go. Um, talking about selling things, guys, I uh, accept applause or derision on my merits. If you've got a spare fiver, uh, stick it into the McClue Fund at gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen McClue or paypal.me forward slash scotty McClue, all one word. I shall tell you for why. Because it helps to pay for little bits of advertising, helps to keep the show going on Facebook, and we're saving up for little bits of equipment as well. So very important there. Uh, I used to work in Ellesmere Port at Stanlow. It's a fine big part of the world, Ellesmere Port, where all your old barges came in. And of course you can move masses of stuff. I remember saying we should get rid of trucks and bring back the barges. And the bargemen, Tempest Fugit, says Mark Gibbett. It does indeed, uh, TF. Uh, we need a Trump in Scotland, Scotty, says Harry Marshall Sr. Right, so there's a big lobby, a big pro-Trump lobby that says that's the way to do government. Get them all with a scruff of the neck and get on with it. Hello, Labrador. Right, uh, a big thank you to the government for looking after the homeless in this weather. Uh, I would like to see them suffer. I tell you, you mean the government, not the homeless, Steve Burroughs. Uh, yes, indeed. Kevin McDonald's watching Dinky Do on you come, Kevin. Lovely to have you with us. Now, time for a share, guys. We're um, coming up to 10 past. I'm going to share a little bit early this week because sharing last week got people very excited. And lots of messages. Oh, Scotty, I didn't know you were on. Didn't know you were on. All that kind of stuff. Well, we have sent a few messages out on Facebook. So you probably should have known I was on. But what I'll do is... I'll uh, get some sharing going just now. There we go. And uh, we'll get that sorted out. Um, Steve Burroughs, a big thank you to the government. Yes, we've done that one. We bow before thee, O First Lord of the Internet, and indeed First Lord of the Bunnet, says Neil O'Gorney. I am indeed the First Lord of the Internet. If you look at the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, you'll see on the letterbox of 10 Downing Street, the official residence, that it says First Lord of the Treasury. That's the real title for the Prime Minister. Prime Minister is really a courtesy title, but uh, First Lord of the Treasury is that appointment. Next door, of course, Chancellor of Exchequer. Yes, the government, Steve, Steve Burroughs. Yes, you feel they haven't been looking after the homeless, Steve. Is that your point, La? So there we are. That's a very fair point. Uh, now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to share this here. So, uh, in fact, what I'll do, I like it as well, because why not? Um, right, and then we're sharing now just to let everybody know it's on. And I'll also share to some of the Scotty McClure pages. If you can all do the same, guys, that just lets everybody know. And then nobody's any excuse. Oh, Scotty, we didn't know you were on. What a shame. Barges, Scotty, come on. I don't want to wait a month for my stuff. F eBay says Mayweb. Oh, we can maybe get a fast barge. But you look at the canals, the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, the Lancaster Canal, all these marvellous, marvellous canals that we've got in this country. Why not put the heavy stuff on there? You wouldn't see a barge jackknifing in the snow there, would you? So there we are. Uh, we are coming. The white pen dragons are taking back control. No ifs, no buts. We are, says Chris McCulley. So tell me more about the dragons, Chris. I've seen you in one or two phone-in programs. So I think you need to uh, you need to front up. You need to tell us what is going on. I'm still sharing, guys. If you're wondering, what's he looking at? I am sharing, right? Not a problem. In fact, what I'll do is I'll share to the group as well, because I think that's quite important. Uh, and you can do all these things. You all know how to work Facebook. So there we are, sharing a group. Uh, so this week, I think we've managed to fend off 
and uh, we don't actually have to change platforms there was a bit of talk of changing platforms but obviously this is an excellent platform the world's top platform and uh, we like to be on here if possible i'll just put up uh, live now um there we are live now okay so i'm just popping that up and if you do the same guys that'd be great the red dragon fought the white dragon and the red dragon won says julianne scott right i take it this is wales julianne this is a little bit of welsh history so fantastic tell us more julianne scott uh, we're all interested in the dragons because i'm mean, not right in thinking obviously st andrew of scotland was the genuine article he was up front there he was the genuine bit and um, st george is a false saint so there wasn't actually a saint george he was just made up am i correct st patrick's of course st patrick was real with the snakes and um st david st david david he he's real as well uh, give us a wee tune, says Carl Carlos Darnay. I'll give you a wee tune later on the box, no doubt. Greetings from Bristol, says David Fraser. Lovely to hear from you, David Fraser, and it's great to know we're going out globally, worldwide. If you're watching in America, Canada, uh, Venezuela, the Tierra del Fuego after 212, what a place that is, Scotty. Then uh, do let us know. Can you please say, Johnny Boy, get off your computer and listen to me, Scotty McClue? Louise Wilde, yes, Johnny Boy, get off your computer. <laughs> right, I'll try again. Johnny Boy, get off your computer and listen to Scotty McClue. Dinky do. St. Cuthbert, says Joseph Gibbons, St. Cuthbert was real as well in the northeast there, yes, because all the big cathedrals, so if you look at Durham Cathedral, I would say that probably, I'll almost bet you that's St. Cuthbert's. And if you look at uh, Westminster Abbey, that's St. Peter's. So there you are. And when they built the new St. Paul's, they took a bit of land from Westminster Abbey. And that's where you get the phrase, robbing Peter to pay Paul. Taking from one part of the church to another. Uh, Scotty, my sweet pea, you look like you've had two or three fish suppers too many. But you're still looking hot, says Rab Hill. Thank you, Rab. I'm sure you're something of a pursuer of Scotty McClue's. So there you are. Scotty, after the Korean fiasco, should we go back to nationalised work instead of fat cats lining the pocket? Alfred James Wright, that is a very, very, very good point. The answer is we need to um, strike out greed and incompetence. Now, what happens <clears throat> with these big companies? They hold the government to ransom a bit and they say, uh, I'll, I'll take the chief executive's job, but I'm wanting a million pounds salary and 10% uh, shares yeah and I'm wanting this and I'm wanting that and then the board get a bit anxious and they go well we're not sure if we can go to that then the guy goes I could get more in America you know now that's the point when under corporate governance the chairman of the board needs to speak up he needs to grow a set speak up and go well we will not stand in your way good luck in America and thank you for popping in on the bus to see us today. Okay? That's what's required. Corporate governance. So your board don't flee like cockroaches when the pressure is on in a business. All right? So there you are. Very, very important. Uh, you're still better than all the rest, Scotty, says John Graham. Well, all the rest seem to be doing very well. So there we go. Um, yes, Scotty, Durham is St. Cuthbert's says Stephen Wearmouth. I knew that, Stephen. I was pretty sure that that would be St. Cuthbert's. St. Cuthbert's. Uh, because uh, that's that's what happens. Usually there's a relic, a tiny little bit of bone of the saint in the cathedral, uh, kept in a jar in the cathedral. Uh, so there you are. So the fat cats, here's what could happen. We're paying uh, for uh, mediocre management, but we're paying entrepreneurial wages. And it used to be you were paid in results. I was paid in results. I brought in huge audiences. I got reasonably good money, right? But uh, what we need to say now to these people is, look, you've got to bring in the money. You must deliver profit. If you don't do it, then we won't take you on. We won't pay you, all right? But see, when it's schools, 
when it's hospitals, when it's the railways, when it's stuff like that that we all need and use, when it's the electricity companies, the gas companies, we all need these things. There shouldn't be. They should be nationalised. All right? Because we all need them. Right? So it's not a choice. So they should be nationalised and they shouldn't be making billions and billions out of government policy. So there we are. Mick Shields is watching Dinky Do Mick. Anne Ingalls, Gordon Elric, Simon Tate, Councillor Henry Anderson, and Daniel Watt. Dinky Do to every single one of you. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue. We are, of course, live on the big one Facebook Live. One hour of superb, scintillating information, education, and entertainment for not just one nation, but throughout the world. Share, 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 share. Can we have a general share right now. Hey, up, Scotty, says Anthony Campbell Innes. Hey, up, Anthony Campbell Innes. Lovely to hear from you. Now, uh, should we come out of Brexit, right? It could happen tomorrow in the Cabinet. Theresa May could actually say, I'm having a vault to face, uh, vault fast, I'm turning around, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to stay in Europe. But I'm going to get you a really, really good deal. So we're back to what the government would have advised. And um, if anything, it's got to go to the House of Lords. Now, they'll probably block it to start with, right? They won't be able to block it forever, but they'll block it to start with. Now, not everybody agrees with the House of Lords. Not everybody agrees with an upper chamber because they're unelected. But it's filled with people who were at one point elected. They're ex-MPs, the former MPs, uh, and that's why they're in there. Uh, so, so there you go. Uh, capitalism, best of the options, says Gordon Cruden. Now, how do we know Gordon Cruden, right? How do we actually know this? Because uh, if you look at some of the other leaders, people condemn our Queen for having a few quid or for running on a few quid, right? But in actual fact, when you see what these foreign leaders, where they have no monarchy, are raking in, massive, massive. I wouldn't be so base as to mention, right? But some of them could uh, buy and sell this country a thousand times over. So there you are. We need the big truck, says Rab Hill. Uh, so there we are. Daniel Watt, all he can say is jail them all. <laughs> That's all he says. What a lot of nonsense, Daniel Watt. You're just talking... Um, out of uh, your uh, your bits and pieces. Scotty, if Brexit goes ahead, should we strike as a country to make sure our government adopts European workers' rights into our law? Well, the thing is, one of the attractions for the capitalists is that they'll get people on the cheap. Um, because if you think European law has raised standards for ordinary people in this country, they didn't used to want the German cruise liners to call in at British ports in case the British workers saw just how well the German workers were treated. Your pension in Germany is uh, worth about three times your British pension. So say we do about 7k pension in this country, 7, 8k, they'll do you 20, 21k in Germany. The laws is a waste of money. Shut them down, says Harry Marshall Senior. Now, what makes you think that, Harry Marshall Senior? If it's politics of envy, if you've got a chip in your shooter, then uh, I'm not buying that one. But if you can come up with a real reason as to why the Lord should be shut down, I will discuss that with you. So there you are. I've been searching for a high-profile job for you, Scotty. You start on Monday. Be the new leader of UKIP. <laughs> yes, the leader of UKIP has to consider his position, I see from today. And they've had nine leaders, if you include Nigel Farage, they've had uh, nine leaders in ten years. Now, I was thinking today, would you chip, would you, you chip, you kip not be better to make that feature, right? I've actually uh, tweeted this uh, to, uh, to LBC Radio. Do you not think that they should make it a feature and uh, make it a one-year job? So say, right, you're the leader, but it's only a year. It's always a year's job, the leader of UKIP. So there you go. Jenny Carty's watching, Alistair Bajak, Michael McGuigan, everything's a raw deal. Now, we do get ripped off the Americans. I was talking to Americans in the summer, and they were laughing. They said, you Brits really get ripped off for automobiles and for fuel. So there we are. Terrible, terrible. Uh, because gas is cheap out there. Personal generosity in our capitalist system would be great. 
but doubt it would roll out because capitalism generally fosters greed, says Gordon Crudon. Well said, Gordon Crudon. You're absolutely correct, of course. The, the, but the greed has been allowed to get out of control. They shouldn't have been allowed to take that money offshore until the tax had been paid on it. So what the government should be saying, right, what you've made here, pay your tax, and then if you want to put it offshore, you do what you like with it, but pay your tax. Helen Avis is watching, didn't you do? I can't get a packet of briskets anywhere, says Rab Hill. Harry Marshall Sr., uh, not all the drugs uh, and behaviour, uh, what are we at? They're crooks. And there's, Harry, I think that's excessive, actually. I'm not even going to read that out because that's excessive. I'm looking at the function of the House of Lords to take a look at what the Commons have done and say, whoa, we steady on with this. You're putting the country in danger. Remember, the Lords might not have youth on their side, but they do have experience on their side. All right. Uh, God and Richie, dinky do, lovely to have you with us. If you've joined, fo folks, if you've just joined us, you're watching Scotty McClue. We are, of course, live on the big one. Facebook Live, the one everyone's watching, the one everyone is talking about. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue. Live just for you, dinky do. Is the nine o'clock time suiting you all better? Do let me know. Uh, so there we are. Excellent to have you all with us. John Dunsmore's watching. Lovely to have you with us, John Dunsmore. Do come and join us. Capitalists award themselves big bonuses with our money. Yes, <coughs> it's taxpayers' money. Now, if you're working for a council, obviously they want to ensure that that's very well spent. But if they're handing it out to uh, an, an outside firm, yeah, then um, you know they're they're actually getting it all into outside businesses. They are not accountable in the same way to the public, right? And that's very important that we have a look at that. And um, it's no example for my children. Nine p.m. is fine, says Gordon Cruden. Yes, you prefer it absolutely. Uh, look what's really going on. It's full of criminals, but they have a free pass to do as they wish. Harry Marshall. I don't think you would need to provide proper evidence of that. I'm just going to have a sip of the barley water. Mm. Oh, that's absolutely lush. Fantastic stuff. Also, three things today. How do you think Mr. Trump's done in his first year? We can touch on that one. Um, do you think we could do with a Donald Trump in Scotland? Do you think that'd be good stuff? Also, um, Brexit, do you think we should cancel it, right? Because it's possible to do so. If you had your way, would you say yes? Because um, your Brexiteers, E-A-R-S, um, they tend to be xenophobic. That's what I've found. Nine o'clock's great, could do with you doing two hours, says Steve Burrows. It'd be great, Steve, it really would. Never mind once a week, Scotty. 9 p.m. every night is fine. Says Stephen Weirmouth. Dinky do, Stephen. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, what have you never known of the Lords? So there you are. Taking drugs and committing crime. Well, that's individuals. You get that. Professional classes now do these things, right? They actually always have. It's just it goes public now. Somebody takes a wee photo of them. Trump is doing great, says Harry Marshall. Uh, we can only measure the impact of Brexit by the price uh, afterwards, if there's any chance, if it could go up, then we've got to stop the Brexit nonsense now. John McKenzie, not quite following you there. Um, can you make it three minutes after nine, says Rab Hill. Why do you watch something, Rab? Television should go off. Excuse me a second. Just taking a little bit of a comfort break. It's roasting. Oh, roasting hot in the studio. There we are. That's better. Thank you very much for that. Um, Scotty, we must respect democracy. I never voted for the SNP. But I, I accept the nation voted for them, says Charles McLaughlin. Yes, but democracy, if it's properly informed, the government have a duty to properly inform. And they sent out a booklet saying, we strongly recommend, I could actually read it to you, we strongly recommend that you remain in the EU, that we as a country remain in the EU, it's better for jobs, 
better for prosperity, better for defense, better for everything. Then along came a few Hoori Henrys, started saying, no, no, let's get out, let's get to the old British spirit, the damn bustles, all that sort of thing, right? And the next thing is the dafties are all voting, oh, maybe we should leave it then, because they don't remember how poor this country was before it went into the EU. So there you are. The only thing at the time, I didn't want this country to go in because it was damaging the fishing and the farming. And I think it's definitely damaged the fishing and the farming. There's no doubt about that. But Mrs May is now in a very strong position to do a deal with Europe. So if she said at Cabinet tomorrow morning, right, Volta fast time, turn around, you turn time. The lady is for turning. It's not as if she doesn't have any experience of you turning. So if she turned around tomorrow and she said to her cabinet, so I think now knowing what we know, now's the time for either another referendum or we pull out just now and say we'll, uh, we'll talk about staying if you do us a much better deal. Right? And then it's up to... Monsieur Barnier and Monsieur Tusk and all the rest of it to get themselves sorted out. Uh, Dinky Doo Taxi, anyone? I'll send one for Trump, says James Bauer of the East Coast Ride Taxi Owners Association. So, excellent stuff. So, demo there's democracy and democracy channels. If we're well informed, and I tend to look at what is best for the country, so I'm following the money, I'm looking at the economic picture, not the political one. I'm not really a political animal. As such, otherwise I would be in Parliament. Uh, we need to give politics a rest in this country and gather ourselves. It's time to go back to Scotland. The world knows best. Well, in actual fact, I think that Scotland should be running the whole thing. If we're going to stay in the UK, then Scotland should be running the Parliament. Um, because the Scots don't subscribe to the class system. Very, very switched on people. Scotland's never been better run. The um, unionist media have done nothing but carp, just a lot of nonsense. When I read it, I think to myself, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. And I think people just look at the headline and leave the paper sitting. <coughs> what do you think of the Women's March, says Jamie Hooper. I was well impressed, but I think we need to have a man's march if that's going to be the case. We need to be very careful that we don't do things too quickly. I'm all for equality, but not for equality's sake. So, um... You know, I don't want them sifting through forms and boardrooms and saying, is it an M or an F that she's ticked or he's ticked, right? And say, F, well, female, right, get her into interview. Well, but the blokes, no, 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 we've got to get more women in. But what if they're not very bright or it doesn't matter as long as it's a woman? Okay, so there we are. That's wrong. All right. Well said, says Chris Martin. So there you are. Uh, I think it's very important that men don't get emasculated. I think it's very important that um, people realise it's not just men who enjoy lovemaking, etc., etc. So <clears throat> there's a few things going adrift here. A bit of a balance going adrift. I think they all want to be victims, says Jamie Hooper. So there you are. Well, yes, you see, if you're a victim of something, then you can cry foul all the time but a victim of what all right people are people in fact i would say if you want to be so bold as to drop the gender thing then let's do it people are people it's the same thing you can't have racism because there's only one race the human race you and i then there's all the gorgeous creatures and the animals they need respected because we're living in their world i saw that some um, vandals had damaged beehives, poured diesel on them. If you kill the bees, you kill us, the humans go. We would be very quickly behind the bees if we lost them. I can tell you that. We need to be another referendum to pull out of Brexit, as the people have already voted to leave. Now, you see, Neil, let me pull you up on this. All right, the people have not voted to leave. Some of the people have voted to leave. It's like if you listen to national media, particularly public service broadcasters, they will say Scotland voted to stay in the Union. Scotland did not vote to stay in the Union. Some of the people of Scotland voted to stay in the Union, and it was just over the half. All right. 
So there you are. So we need to be adding that. You should be in number 10, Scotty. The place would be a better place, says Rab. Well, I don't know, Rab. It's very interesting because when you get to these so-called big jobs, you have to do exactly as you're told. So there you are. When the Prime Minister gets into the back of the car, the car will move off because the driver knows exactly where he's going and what he's doing. The private secretary will hand papers to them and say, make sure you've learned that. That's your speech for tonight, etc., etc. I've heard we'd live for two years without our bees, says Gordon Cruden. Gordon, you're a wise man. I'll take your word for it, but I wouldn't like to risk it. So there you are. Not been well today, said some poor soul. I didn't actually see the name. Referendums and advisory, or it's a wish vote. It's not binding. The government don't have to follow it. No, they don't. And if I was Mrs May, I would spring that bombshell on them all at Cabinet tomorrow and say, I've decided to um, listen to Lord Kerr, who drafted Article 50 and knows exactly what he's talking about. And um, I think what we're going to have to do here is say, whoa, let's stop it. All right, let's stop it. Because that gives us power back. Whereas, uh, you know, we have been driven at the moment. Scotty, uh, have you tried the Orange Challenge, says Gregor Gillespie. No, I haven't. Uh, if schools close, says Andrew Thompson, do you own one hat, old lady? Do you only own one hat, old lady, says Sean McKenna. Sean, do not be ridiculous. I have stacks of hats. Are you watching? Yay, yay right there's another one okay well, how many more hats have we got here's another one here right there you go there's another hat okay there's another hat right let's see if we can get this up so there we go is that okay for you let me see if i can get something oh this is a bit tricky this one hold on stay with me right okay so have you got all these hats okay and yes oh these are heavy <sighs> oh all right so we're okay for that now you're quite happy with that are you cheeky thing do i only own one hat and that's just some of them the whole pile of them there um do they always wear hats like that in wales says sean mckenna yes i think you wear this anywhere uh you know this is yorkshire this is the North East, this is Newcastle Lake, and uh, this is Scotland. Yes, always. I've worn this since I was about 12. My dad bulk buys bonnets too, says Angie Thompson. Quite right. Got my Glen Gary sitting next door. Love it, says Harry Marshall Senior. Uh, you need a fez, says Angie Thompson. Fez, uh, just like that. Okay, I will show you a trick. Um, I'd be more inclined to believe our country can pioneer a new system of governance on Europe if not the world. Yes, Gordon, you're absolutely right, but they need to stay in and take their place at the big table. There's no point in us going back to being a tiny wee country. What people, there's nobody alive now, really, that would be at the meetings surrounding 1940, when you had Clem Attlee and, uh, well, it wasn't Clem Attlee, it was Churchill and Chamberlain and the Labour gentleman, his name just escapes me, and they were sitting wondering, should they surrender to uh, Germany? And would Germany let them keep India? And would Germany let them keep the Royal Navy? All right, so there you are. So poor old Churchill wasn't just as influential as you might think. In fact, they kind of blanked him when he stuck his nose into all the military stuff. Uh, hello, Scrooge McDuck, says Johnny J. Kabache. Nick Hornberger, I'm Caitlin. Please, what time does the auction start? Silly Scottish woman, uh, you can still hear the Welsh in your accent, miss. I am Joe Couch, says Joe Couch. Think you do, Joe Couch? I thought by your name you probably would be. Um, Churchill was a drunk and an art forger, says Sean McKenna. Yes, but he did many other things as well. Um, you know, he was um, uh, not all sweetness and light, shall we say. A bit random, but would you do a reality show? A... Uh, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here to get your show noticed, says Paddy O'Gormley. Yes, I would. I got into the final of Big Brother 
but the panel decided not to take me because I had so much television experience. They said that I would know what they were up to. And I promised them, I said, yeah, but I'm not going to let on. They said, we can't take the risk, Scotty. So there we are. Uh, I'm looking to buy one, says Joe Rickard. What are you talking about, Joe? A Budget? A Glen Gary? A television? Um, I think Sandy Howden is celebrating the Hearts win today, says Alfred James Wright. Well, we don't know. That's up to Sandy to tell us. He sent the tanks into Glasgow, did he not, Scotty? Are you talking 1919 when they had to lock up the Scottish Regiment, the um, Highland Light Infantry in the Maryhill Barracks in case they sided? Yes, I mean, they were very worried about revolution in Scotland in 1919. No wonder, after the slaughter of the First World War, the ordinary person felt terribly, terribly let down. I think nowadays we struggle to realise just the hard, hard, hard life. We talk about homeless people sleeping rough, but the lives that the miners had, the poverty, the suffering, how tough it was, doing peace work, working for the mine owners. This country has been transformed over the last hundred years, and it is a hundred years. It's a hundred years since the end of the First World War. And I can remember sitting in aunt's houses and great aunt's houses, and pictures of uh, my uncles uh, from the first war. So there you are. Um, Ashanti said you're selling a couch. No, not to my knowledge. Hi, Scotty. Good to see you. My mum and dad, Martin and Steve, are watching you live for the first time, says John Hodgson. Martin and Steve, I say dinky do and hi to both of you. Marion and Steve. Sorry, I beg your pardon. My mum and dad, Marion and Steve. I don't know where I got that from. And John Hodgson, you must be very proud of your son. One of our finest broadcasters and young radio executives in the country. Marion and Steve, lovely to have you with us. Scotty McClue says dinky-doo to every single one of you. Uh, so there we are. Go back to the potato farm, says Michael Shaw. Absolutely, Michael. Go back to when they were howking the tatties. Very, very, very tough work. Still is. I remember when I first watched them planting the tatties and I saw this big wooden box being towed across the field by the wee Fergie, the wee Ferguson tractor, and I thought, isn't that a fabulous machine? How does it know to drop the potatoes out just at the right um, place? Terrific stuff. So I asked them about it, and just as I was going up to talk to the farmer about the machine, out got all these people from the back of it. They've been dropping potatoes through the floor. Uh, is that a supreme cap? I don't know. It's a superb cap. I can tell you that, Steve Vargas. Um, so there we are. Ashanti wants the couch to sell as soon as possible. This is Michael Shaw. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Roger Lopez says, hello. Hello, Roger. Lovely to hear from you and Dinky Doo. Uh, can we see your couch, please, says Lee Cooper. Uh, when does the auction start, please, sir, says Adam Hallam. <laughs> right. Uh, show us the tatties, says Johnny J. Cabacci. Wonderful stuff. Will you sell me your cap? No. Scotty McClure's cap is not for sale. If um, I uh, have more of an abundance, I might give you one, but we don't sell them. Your head looks like a potato, says Eric North. What I shall do with you, Eric, there we are, just as a wee gift for that, is we will block you. Uh, so there we are, that's what we'll do. That's always a bit of fun. So there you are, we can block them. Uh, so what have we got here? Who is Scotty McClure? This is Sean McKenna. Scotty McClure is the World Soap Broadcaster, first lord of the internet, 40,000 hours of live unscripted broadcasting in television and radio, four ITV stations, 32 radio stations. That's who Scotty McClure is. So there we are. Right, what I'm going to do with these guys, there's a lot of nonsense going on here, and I think I know what it is. I'm just going to dump a few folks here. All right, so blocked him, and uh, I'll just block this one. There we are, and block that one. Another one. Are you French? No, je regrette, mais je ne parle pas français très vite. I'm just blocking that one as well. So there we go. Right, that's these guys. Another one here going. There we go, and we block them. So what I've done there, I've blocked half a dozen daftes because they were wasting our time. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue. We are, of course, live in the big one. Facebook Live, the one everyone's talking about, and the one everyone is watching. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue. 
live on Facebook Live, Sunday nights, 9 o'clock sharp. Never, ever miss a second of this program. You miss a second of Scotty McClure. You miss a moment of life. That's a moment of your life you will never get back. Do not risk it, I say. So there we are. Right, let's say, uh, my goodness me, it's share time again. Time flies when you're enjoying yourself, guys. Let's get sharing again. Share, share, share. Can we have everybody who's watching now share right away? So there we are. I'll share that now. Public in brackets. We like that, don't we? We love all that. And I shall also share there to the page. And that keeps people on their metal. So there we are. I'll also put up share. Uh, there we are. And then I'll put live now right excellent right so i'm just going to post that this is interesting how come you have one device sitting beside another device one device is very very fast because we have very very fast high speed internet here and the other device is much slower so that i find interesting beam me up scotty wonderful stuff right we're back uh steve burrows some funny people on here tonight, you know. I've just blocked half a dozen of them. Uh, so there we are. Johnny J. Cabacci, I think he should go as well. So hold on. There we are. And uh, that's Johnny gone. There we go. And anybody else want to be silly? Uh, do you use oil of Yule to stay so young, says Rab? Ah, Rab, it's just my natural complexion. Just tremendous, uh, tremendous health. Very, very fit. Wow, Scotty has a lot of background. There's a lot of background there. Did you not see? What did you What did you not see? There we are. There you go. Wait, I'll show you the thistle. Have I shown you the thistle before? Is the thistle not fabulous? Look at that. And there's old McClure. There you go. And there's old McClure. There you go. Excellent. All there. Fantastic stuff. Right, so that's that. No problem at all. Now, um, calm down, William Wallace, says Nick Hornberger. Nick, where are you watching from, Longshanks, eh? So there you are. Get them chops, says Gordon Clinton. They've all gone. Uh, how much? Here's Paul Black. So Paul's about to go as well. He's talking about the couch. So we shall just block him. There you are. You will never, ever hear from these people again, folks. So you can uh, you can relax. <clears throat> Get him chucked. I'm going to have another sip of the barley water, if I may. Mm. I can't believe how... <coughs> <coughs> Maybe that wasn't the best thing. I can't believe uh, just how quickly the time goes on a Sunday night. But 9 o'clock suits all of you. And tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Can everybody share again right now? And that gets us up to that. Uh, does the couch recline? So there we are. Somebody else just about to go very shortly. Uh, what's all the stuff about couch? It's kids being a bit silly. So what we'll do, um, I'm just, what I'm doing, guys, I'm just blocking them if they're being silly. So there we are. He's gone. And there's somebody, respect. Who else have we got? Um, Jacob's gone. Uh, I'll just... Blocking the dafties. Do you class yourself as British or Scottish? Well, it depends if you're talking about which country are you from. Remember, there's no such country as Britain, right? It's not a country. So you cannot be British if you're talking about what country you come from. So I would need to be Scottish, and you would need to be English or Irish or French or German or Welsh or Northern Irish or whatever, right? You could have that. But um, if you're if you're being British, then it means you're either from Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, or Wales. All right, so you can do it that way. But there's no such country as as Britain. So being British is just being of one of the countries that makes up Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Great Britain is a land mass. So if you're British, you're from that land mass. Yeah. And people would have called themselves British when they were in India pre-1947. Things from that. So you would have a bit of that as well. 
Um, evening, Scotty. Miss you on the radio. So that's what I'm telling you. And the other thing is, I notice there's a move afoot by uh, Westminster at the moment to try and belittle Scotland. Like uh, when Mrs May was asked, what about another referendum? She went, no dice, all that sort of stuff. So we need to be able to say to her, no dice, all right? And she says, what about doing this for Scotland? No dice, right? That sort of idea. Now, um, what you've got, or the Scottish government should be saying that, because there is a rule that Scotland should be 50-50. This rule was made up at the Union. <coughs> pardon me, I do beg your pardon. In 1707, and there is a rule that Scotland is equal, absolute equal partners with England in the Union. All right, so it's 50%, 50% there. Um, Scotty, you need a sidekick to kick out the rubbish, says Paddy O'Gorney. Yes, absolutely. Uh, does your scout, does your couch have a Scottish accent? Well, just block Chet Crawl. So there you are. That's Chet Crawl. You'll never hear from him again either. He has gone. Uh, there's Joe Couch, says, I love this guy. I've shared straight away, says Roger Lopez. Thank you. Well done, Scotty Dinky Doo, says Harry Marshall Sr. That's for getting rid of the wheat from the chaff, I see. So there you go. So that's your question. But um, what they were doing to try and belittle Scotland, and it was done a hundred years, well, it was done more than a hundred years ago. It was done a hundred and twenty years ago. 125 years ago that you put that you were from North Britain so if that's the case then we have to finish with England there is no more England there's just South Scotland all right so if you're from England you should have to say I'm from South Scotland yes that's the way it does <coughs> who does your teeth says Rab do them myself Rab so there you are happening <laughs> happening uh, wonderful stuff right uh, how are we doing here for time now yes we've got about eight minutes so one more share fantastic stuff and tell 10 to tell 10 and guys i shall share stuff with you on facebook please do not get fed up with that share it and share it and share it right so when you see stuff come through from scotty mcclure don't go Oh, here he is again with this. I'm getting fed up with this. Don't get fed up. Share it because that's the way the show becomes as successful as it is. Um, Aaron Williams. So there you are. So just block him as well. So there we go. Block Aaron. So Aaron's gone. And Joe uh, has gone. There we are. Plenty of people getting blocked tonight, guys. Fantastic stuff and this one here has been blocked fantastic stuff it's a troll group called the couch gang there are millions of them if they decide not to like you your live streams will flood with them that's okay that's no problem at all what's your degree in scotty says peter martin my degree is an arts degree peter <laughs> so there you are dramatic art um, can we bid on the phone? There's Tara, so we'll just say cheery bye to her as well. Wonderful. And uh, that's that. So there we go. So the troll gang, bye bye, guys. Excellent stuff. Hello, I love your accent, says John Stockton. Uh, do you have two feeds running? I don't see who's being blocked or what they're saying. It's not like you, Dinky Doo. No, no, but they're being silly. Harry, it's when uh, they're spoiling the program for other people, and we can't have that. So there we go. So that has to go. Um, I think you're getting refugees from Jeremy Kyle on Scottish Afternoon Flight. Well, of course, Jeremy Kyle replaced me on Century Radio in Manchester. Jezza, as he was at the time, Jezza's Confessions. And uh, Jeremy replaced Scotty McClure. And uh, poor Soli would have his work cut out there too. Um, what's this stuff about a couch, says Paul. It's a troll gang, apparently. There's another one there. We'll just get short of him. Wonderful stuff. So I could spend the week just blocking that lot, guy. There's somebody who's saying bored, right? Never, ever, ever be bored, right? I once said to my mother, I was bored, and she gave me a duster. 
Wonderful. Any more shows coming up, Scotty, says Steve Burrows? Well, what we'll do, yes, we're going to work out. I'm talking to some very senior people. It's been going on a while now. I know that. But uh, they've got to make decisions about the radio if they want to have an audience or if they just want to die off. It's very interesting because very often when people start a radio station, they say, no, 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 we don't want you, Scotty. No, no, we've got people, you know, we've got big, big names, big names. And then a few weeks later, the big names don't do any business and they have to let them go. Then they float about in the wilderness for a while. Then eventually a switched on person says, Scotty, we'd like to try you out. The audience goes through the roof and they're away with it. Fantastic. So there we go. Um, excellent stuff. Now, here we go. I'll just do a wee bit more business here, Couch Gang. Yes. So what I'm doing, guys, I'm just going to um, block all these people that come on with that. There we are. There's another one. Excellent. So he's gone. Jane McDonald's watching, Dinky Doo. Lovely to have you. Wonderful, Jane McDonald's. Get these gone, Scotty, says Ben Lucas. Ignore the Ned, Scotty. They're going. Don't worry about that. We're just blocking them all here, and it's no problem at all. Excellent stuff. Even Scotty, miss you on the radio, says Wayne Smith. Wayne, love to see your comments on Facebook. Tremendous stuff. So there we are. Oof, I just got owned, says Kyle. <laughs> Complete good, Scotty. Now better to do the spoil things. Good live figures tonight, says Ben Lucas. Yeah, we're ending up, we're getting a few thousand all the time. And I spoke to a friend of mine who's a program controller in radio, and he said, Scotty, local radio would be absolutely over the moon if they got figures like you're getting on Facebook Live. Tremendous stuff. So there you are. Um, so, very good figures, yes, excellent stuff. Here's another one coming up, so we'll just get him. Gordon Sterling is wanting me, never mind couches, he says, can you plug my bus seats? Gordon has a small business and he restores bus seats. These things are rather gorgeous, guys. So if you fancy one for your house or for your garden shed or something like that, do let me know. So there we go. Um, this is wonderful, this couch lot. I'm enjoying blocking them. Wonderful stuff. Uh, if they turn you down, it's a big mistake, Scotty. Yes, but you can't tell them that. I mean, I was thinking this week, a friend of mine once asked me for advice. And I gave him my very, very best advice. Now, this would have netted him three million pounds, right? Three million pounds. And he'd have probably ended up getting an honour as well. And what did he do with that advice? He chose to ignore it. So there you go. Now, don't get me wrong. He went on and he did very well financially, but he lost out on that £3 million. And still today, he lost out on that £3 million because he didn't take Scotty McClure's advice. Interesting, isn't it? So there we are. And Duke Hafner, let's get you away here. Oh, hang on. One or two cheeky people. I think when a program becomes successful, you do get people wanting to see if they can jump on the bandwagon, guys. So you do get that. So I will take my time and just get rid of these. There's a Keen Harding or something like that. Gone. There we go. Lovely. Right, so that's excellent. There's Nikki Lip, who's just joined us. Welcome, Nikki. Lovely to have you with us. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, first lord of the internet, saying dinky-doo to every single one of you. Nothing on live television matches this, guys. Remember that. There is nothing on live television like the Scotty McClue show on Facebook Live. Tremendous stuff. Gordon Sterling has put his eBay link up there for the bus seats excellent stuff we like that uh brian clark so there we are now brian is also in for this couch thing so we'll just block him excellent stuff wonderful and well wonderful love it that's nikki away as well nikki lip who just joined us gives a bit of his lip so there you are 
Did you like the albino peacock the other day, Scotty? Yes. Did you see that on my feed, guys? The albino peacock just spread his tail. It was so impressive. And um, there we are. All you couch mobs need to get to bed for school, says Harry Marshall. Quite right. All right, Scotty Roy, you dinky do. So it's Robert Abercrombie. Excellent, Robert. Fantastic stuff. And uh, they're getting jealous of your success, says Alistair King. They do, but success has many fathers. When I first went on Facebook Live, I got poo-pooed and people laughed and thought, what are you doing, man? Oh, oh, is this what you're doing? And then now, of course, people are going, the show's brilliant. The show's tremendous, Scotty. It's wonderful. Oh, tremendous. I, I always knew it would be a success. Everything you touch is a success, Scotty. All that sort of stuff. So there you are. Success has many fathers and failure is an orphan. No star, says Julianne Scott. No star, Julianne. No star to every single one of you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for staying with us. I apologize for the uh, immature couch mob that appeared that we had to keep blocking. And we will keep blocking until we have blocked all of them. Every single one of them. It's interesting because a guy said to me, he said, watch you don't lose some viewers. I said, there's millions out there. There's anything up to two billion viewers potential viewers out there tremendous stuff guys can we have one more share before i go and then i will sing you the song are we ready oh goodbye everybody goodbye take care everybody as you go goodbye everybody a wait a zane au revoir and a cheerio Lovely to have you with us tonight. A fabulous show. This is Scotty McClue wishing you a wonderful week. Please take great care if you have severe weather. Do be very, very careful. And if you're driving, please don't crash into each other because it's so frightening. Love you lots. Scotty McClue saying dinky-doo to every single one of you. Ta-da, loves! Scotty McClue has left the building.